Let me know when you're ready to go live. I will. As soon as she lets me know, I'll let you know. Recording in progress. We'll call the Kitsap Public Facilities District meeting for Monday, March 20th, 2023 to order. Okay, first item is public comment. Do we have any? I do, have, do have, Mr. have Mr. Anderson, Anderson that, is that is in the in wings. wings. Let me uh, uh, see, see if he's, he's got, got a question or anybody or else. else. As a matter of fact, fact, if anybody, anybody would like to make a public comment, comment if you, if you just, just raise your hands, hands for, me. for me. Okay, Mr. Hey, Mr. Anderson, Anderson, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, good evening. This is uh, Hank Anderson again. Um, just a procedural comment. It looks like the Facility project report may not have been added to the packet until today. Is that correct? Mr. Anderson, Anderson we, we can we barely can hear, hear you. you. Can you can say it again, please? The facility progress report appears to not have been added until today to the packet. Makes it hard to review before the meeting. I just received it today, Mr. Anderson. Anderson. Is, is that contrary to what they're really obligated in order to have a complete packet before the meeting uh, 24 hours or more? Or is that kind of an optional uh, element to the preparation for such a meeting? No, sir, it's not optional, but we are meeting a week early. And so all of our reports can be a little bit behind since we're meeting. Normally we'd meet March 27th and by the end of the month then they have the previous month to go so but i, I did get it today so it is part of this presentation and it is part of the meeting packet so everyone gets an opportunity to see it okay that's all i have thank you thank you okay if no more public comment we'll move on to item three which is approval of the consent agenda uh, Mr. Chair, I would uh, like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, with the exception of letter E, the KCC financial report. Uh, the consent agenda was sent out ahead of time, uh, but the K uh, Kitsap Conference Center uh, was not included in that, and so I, it's just procedural on why I'm pulling it out, but uh, we, we'd like to approve that separately. Okay, do we have a second for? I'll second it. Okay, we have a second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of approving the consent agenda with the exception of item E, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. The consent agenda passes with the exception of item E. Okay, now we're going to move on to item four, which is the uh, facility progress report, which is a Port of Bremerton yes, presentation. Let, let, let me uh, bring in Commissioner Stracklejohn. He's going to be presenting on behalf of the uh, Port of Bremerton. So, Commissioner, let me get you in there. Okay, Commissioner Stracklejohn, you are promoted as a panelist. Uh, if you want to come on video, you can. Otherwise, you can just you're unmuted, so you can. Uh, I have in I have in front the proposal for you as as or I have with me the proposal for you and what was just recently sent to me. Also, Mr. Towns is here, so um, if you need to defer to him, he can speak as well. Yeah. Good evening, Chair. Can you can you hear us coming in? We yes, can. Sir. A little faint, but we can hear you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Uh, good evening, board members, and thank you uh, for making time on the agenda this evening, allowing us to give an update on the circus project. Um, you know, in the past, we've had a lot of discussion about this project. There's been a lot of details shared. So I'm sure we all realize the benefit and uh, the significance and importance of the community that this brings, as well as it being self-sustaining. 
So you all be happy to know that I'll stick with new and current information. Uh, to begin with, we have completed the market and feasibility study, which was requested last fall. And I hope that all of you have this in your possession. Um, it's extremely complete. It's seven chapters, uh, probably about three quarters of an inch thick. If you don't have it or you haven't seen it, please ask Russ for it and, and he'll, I'm sure, get it to you. Um, I think you'll find it to be very complete, and very informative. Uh, another new item of business is that the Port of Bremerton, as landowners and uh, uh, yeah, land, as landowners to the circus project, we have entered into an LOI uh, in support of the infrastructure needed for the public portion of this project uh, to the amount of $11.6 million. Uh, we would do that with most any of our tenants that we have uh, on port property, as we understand that the infrastructure, what drives the business and drives the businesses to the port, and they obviously need to have that. So that is a, a new document. I believe you also have that. Russ, do, you, do your members have that? Correct. Correct. Uh, um, all of the, the all of all that, that has been, been sent, sent ahead, ahead of time, time to the, to the uh, board, board, Mr. Shackleton. Okay, thank you for that. So uh, basically, those are the new documents you should have possession. Um, with that, we have with us tonight also James Towns. Uh, he is from Hilltop Security, who is a bond counsel. Uh, he's in zooming in from California this evening. And as we all know, we appreciate the uniqueness of this project uh, as it is proven to be self-sustaining. And James is here to cover the financial mechanics of how we can fund this and how and to bring clarity to this funding mechanism um, that we have available here at the PFD. So I hope that this settles most of our required documentation um, that has been requested by the PFD and, and hopefully that information uh, is complete and will help you to make a decision and move forward with this. Uh, we do have a construction season upon us. I know everybody knows, is thankful for spring coming around and so we're anxious to get started as we wanna take full advantage of the season. So James, we'll turn it over to you. Thanks for being here from California. And you can just key that. And actually, we're lucky enough to have him in person in the chambers here in Kitsap County. Thank, thank you, Axel. Can you can you hear me? Am I on? Okay. Yeah. I, I have a hard time hearing the last gentleman. Uh, can, testing, testing. Can you hear me? You you really need to speak up. Well, how, how about now? Is better. it is that good? Not good, but better. Better. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I would like to um, share with uh, w with the board a, a presentation that we've put together. I want to go, uh, Rusk, if you can put the, the second page on the screen. Um, what, I, what I'd like to talk about, just a couple of quick things. Uh, one is a summary of the feasibility study. It's a 150-page document, which, which I believe you all have, but I, I will highlight a couple things in there uh, and go through uh, what we look at at Hilltop Securities when we're looking at credit approval for a bond issue. And then our um, request, which uh, I, if you recall, I was at the November 15th meeting um, and made a request for a $20.5 million uh, uh, funding that involved a bond issue or potential bond uh, issue. And at that time, um, uh, we, uh, Russ and, and the board met after that meeting and decided to put some additional requirements. One of those requirements was uh, partial funding. The other requirement that, that uh, was put on us was um, uh, talk to other uh, public bodies uh, and try to get them to commit to funding as well, and then the feasibility study. So we did uh, we did complete the feasibility. Uh, Russ, if you could go to to the following page, to the next page. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of quick background on me. When I was here in November, I worked at a company called Caldwell Sutter Capital. Since then. I have left that firm to, to go to Hilltop Securities, and primarily the reason is Hilltop is a is a um, is a is a number one investment bank. It's a it's a public finance investment banking organization. Um, 
at Hilltop, we do about 20 transactions every single week. Over the past five years, $259 billion worth of securities underwritings. Um, we're ranked number five nationally, and we have over a billion dollars in underwriting capacity. So I just I wanted to highlight Hilltop Securities uh, as my new employer, um, and just give you a, a, a quick background on what we do to get approval for a project. The first thing um, that we do is the senior credit officer at the firm reviews the feasibility analysis and reviews the financial information. We have a committee of senior management that will then approve the transaction for uh, the firm as a preliminary approval, an allowance to have the firm engaged to underwrite securities. We, we completed that process in early February. Um, the firm invited Mr. Joel Cohen the, uh, from the Joel Cohen Group down to Houston to uh, have a meeting, uh, an all-day meeting as the company's representative. And so he was, he, he was there, I was there, and we talked with senior management at Hilltop Securities about the project. Our management team gets behind about five or six of these projects per year, uh, what I would call large-scale entertainment complex projects. After the meeting ended, uh, our management decided that this is one of the, the five or six projects that they will be supporting this year and taking to the market for a bond issue. Um, we did all of the uh, background checks of the ownership of CNW. We did a, a company check. We've gone through a rigorous process to, to vet this transaction. So that has all been completed, and I'm happy to say uh, CNW has now engaged Hilltop Securities as the underwriter for their senior debt. That may not mean a, a lot to you, but to us, uh, that puts us on a fast track to selling debt, putting a debt package together, selling debt, and closing to start construction. Our timetable is to close on the bonds by June 28th of this year. That gives us a few months to put together the package, find investors, and get the bonds sold. A couple, couple things about the market, uh, the financial feasibility study. Hunden Strategic Partners was the entity that was selected uh, by Circuit of the Northwest with input from me, and the reason for that is we had to select somebody that is independent and is known in the marketplace to bond purchasers. Hunden Strategic Partners is one of the largest and most well-known uh, companies out there doing feasibility for entertainment complexes, and they put together a nice 150-page study that has a local economic impact analysis, uh, market analysis, case studies about every um, entity out there that kind of looks like uh, the CNW project, even though there aren't any that are exactly like it. And if you read the study, you'll find lots of detailed information in there, uh, information from which uh, my bond investors will be uh, making decisions based on the independent analysis, at least making some credit decisions based on that independent analysis. Next, please. The primary revenue and expense model that the feasibility study consultants put together is shown on this page. It is in the study on table 7-1. This is a consolidated schedule of the feasibility studies, predicted revenues and predicted expenses with the bottom line of this table showing projected coverage on debt service for senior bonds of CNW. I put, a le I put a, uh arrow pointing down at 2028. That's when the feasibility consultants believe stabilization uh, would occur. Uh, about $56 million in revenues, uh, 31.7 expenses for a NOI, call it $25 million NOI, with a projected debt service on their senior debt of $10 million. That's a, almost a 2.5 debt service coverage ratio. So that's the stabilization year. You can see in the ramp up years, uh, it takes a little longer to get the revenues ramped up according to the feasibility consultant. Um, but stabilization and thereafter, 
uh, very reasonable debt service coverage. This report was reviewed again by my credit uh, folks and uh, internal senior management um, and was acceptable and, and uh, well received by, by them. The report has high level uh, charts like this, but also very detailed analysis of price per ticket, uh, expected amount somebody's going to pay for a hot dog. I mean, it goes into the detail of how you roll up all these revenues and all these expenses by category. This is the summary table. This is the most important table in the report from a revenue and expense standpoint. The report also lays out something really important for the community, for the county, for the area, uh, local economic impacts, and those those things are identified as new spending, new earnings, new full-time equivalent jobs, new business that results from having a, a, a facility like this, and new taxes. So these are all sort of the identified uh, items that impact the local community. These three tables come directly from the feasibility report. Uh, numbers that back up the, that, that, that sort of uh, highlight the new spending, the new earnings, and the new jobs to be created along with um, sales tax during construction. So just in the left-hand box, the new spending, $3.5 billion projected over a 30-year period. 1.5 billion projected new earnings, that's, that's direct jobs and indirect jobs and jobs that, that come about as a result of, uh, of having, a, again, a facility like this. So over $5 billion in net new spending and new earnings. Average per year, about 167 million. I don't know if you, you, know, you can average it per year. It might be fluctuating up and down, but that's, that's a lot of economic impact in terms of new spending and new earnings for, for, for this project. Upper right-hand corner, new full-time equivalent jobs. They're predicting 979 jobs, 601 direct jobs, and you can, you can, uh, uh, you can see what that, that impact is, is really direct new earnings to people here who will be re getting jobs that they didn't already, that weren't already available in the community. And the bottom, Box. Jim, um, what is an induced job? So, uh, so direct. So direct would be something like, uh, of course, that's easy, right? You get hired at the at the entertainment complex to uh, uh, sell hot dogs at the concession stand. That's a direct job. An indirect job is uh, somebody at the hotel across the street working gets a job. The hotel exists because the facility exists. And an induced job is further down the line, uh, for which is somebody at Amazon who got hired because there's more packages coming through because of the facility. So it's a it's a another way to look at it: direct, indirect, and induced on spending. Direct spending is at the is at the facility. Indirect would be business to business expenses, and induced spending would be people spending their money employees and, and ancillary uh, workers spending their money uh, on something in the community. So on the, in the back in the appendix, I have the definitions for you. I, I, I don't plan to go over the appendix information tonight, but I did want to have a, a information there for you. Uh, lots of extra charts, lots of extra information. So we will not be going through the appendix unless you'd like me to go through, through that uh, in an effort to do this in a timely manner here tonight. Uh, tax tax impact taxes. That's uh, you know what we sort of think of um, helping the community. All the local taxes. So the, the first one, sales tax generated by cons the construction, six hundred and fourteen thousand. That's right out of right out of the report. The sales tax impact for Kitsap County over thirty years is fifty six point five million. That's a million eight per year in additional sales taxes to be collected by the, the 2.7 percent that the county gets. Property taxes. This is a 30-year estimate of property taxes coming from the condo sales. There are in the plans 266 condo units to be developed along the track and around the track, and 
or near the entertainment complexes. Uh, those will have property tax associated with them. There's a leasehold excise tax that gets collected on lease payments in the state of Washington. A portion of that stays with the state. I believe it's 53% under their guidelines and 47 is returned back here to the county and city. So a uh, fairly large tax impact over the 30 years or if you look at it on the right, how much uh, on, an, on an annual basis. So that sort of concludes my, my summary of the 150 page feasibility. I hope you all get a chance to look at it. What we're here tonight to ask for, and, and this goes back to our original request back in November for the 20.5 million, what we'd like to do, we've, we've gone back, we've retooled the financial model, we've, we've looked at uh, new projections on existing projects. I've been on uh, the phone with Russ and the municipal advisors going through the financial model that you've all seen at the January 19th meeting. What we would like to request is a smaller, uh, a smaller amount of funding, $10,250,000. No bonding required as part of that. We would do that with an ILA, presumably between the port and the KF, KPFD. Um, and we would set it up on a payment schedule, like, like your existing, like your ILAs. We would structure the payments to match cash flows, expected sales tax cash flows, and taking out the, all the other projects that are a part of, of the uh, existing commitments. So I'd like to uh, just sort of go over on the next page, Russ, my sort of assumptions um, for the analysis, and I'll show you what the analysis looks like. I used a 3%, 3.5%, sorry, growth rate in sales taxes per annum. Um, I'll tell you in a minute, I'll show you a table in a minute why I, why I chose 3.5%. I've, I've got the Port Orchard, Paul's Bow, and Port Gamble projects in the financial model funded to the dollar amounts, years amounts, bond issue sizes as projected by the financial advisor in the January 19th special board meeting as well as updates from our conference call last Monday. And I believe I have them all exactly right, but I did have to kind of create this myself from scratch. So I'm going to have the advisors review my calculations to, for accuracy. But I, I believe that, that, they're, that they're accurate. What I did in addition to what you've seen in the past is I've added a couple new columns. One column is additional sales tax dollars that will be generated, the 0.033% that KPFD will get from the economic impact of the facility. And the other column I added was interest earnings calculated on cash balances that are sitting around in your cash account. And we can talk about what's reasonable for, the, for that calculation as well. Um, but I think it will help to just take a quick look at the schedule that I've put together. You'll notice it looks a lot like the schedules you've already seen um, from your advisors, but uh, let's, let's go to that page, Russ, and, and review that. Um, what, what the goal of this schedule is to predict on the right-hand side in the yellow how much money would be or could be available to fund 10250000 for the Port CNW project. And when would that money, or could that money be available? You notice it's lumpy, it's not an equal amount each year. It's not, it's based on, as I said, the projected cash flows of sales taxes and all of the other obligations. So if, if we go back to the left-hand side, I've got the gross sales tax rebate revenue on the left. The two new columns are the interest earnings and the additional sales taxes associated with the project. You'll notice it's not a very big number, right? It adds up to $400,000 over, over uh, the, the years out to 2041. The 0.033%, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't generate a lot. And Russ, I think we've talked about, it's, it, it's kind of a little number. I, we can look at that math again and see if it's, if, if it's correct. I didn't want to overstate it for this purpose. Um, Operating expenses are straight from, from uh, the estimations at the January 19th meeting and existing debt service as well. So uh, 
what I did then is I took all of the current uh, ILAs and bonds, I added the new requests that have come in recently, I think a 6.5 million bond issue for Port Orchard, a 7.839 Paul's Bow, um, Port Gamble for an extra 350 this year, and then 8 million for, uh, just I put it at the end based on the conversation with the advisors on uh, last Monday, $8 million at the end. So this is what the cash flow would look like using a 3.5% annual inflation rate for uh, sales tax receipts. It shows a slightly positive balance, fund balance at the end, um, and uh, e even assuming that $8 million uh, additional uh, cost for the Port Gamble project that, that was thrown in kind of at the, the very end of this cash flow projection. Just a quick chart on inflation of annual sales taxes. I look back 2015 to 2022, your actual sales tax increases um, each year averaged 8.53%. Um, I think this year they're running 45 to 5% January, February, based on the, based on the uh, last two board reports. And then inflation, uh, actual inflation, core inflation from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, eight-year average, two and a half percent. Uh, you can also see even during COVID, there was an increase in uh, sales tax collections. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get 8.53 percent on average every year? So the next page is uh, I, I put together just to say, okay, well, what if that happened? I'm not saying that this is going to happen or I'm not predicting that it's going to happen, but if, if you funded all the projects as requested now, uh, added the, the POB CNW 10 million 250, uh, at 8.53%, eight, eight that would be a pretty nice sum of money at the, at the end. Again, I'm not predicting that this is going to happen. This, this is just sort of, but I do believe that you have to look at optimistic scenarios along with pessimistic scenarios when you're when you're trying to come up with scenarios and solutions to um, you know your funding your funding requirements Jim Walt, Walt Draper here so you, you use three and a half percent uh, inflation on the sales tax revenues and it's been a little over eight percent historically Yes, and uh, you know, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to inflate that so much that it's you know it's egregiously high, but I I believe three and a half is a reasonable a reasonable assumption given that it's it's really been in the fours and fives lately, but um, you know that's up for debate. Jim, on this particular uh, back to the previous slide, Russ. Um, on, on this slide, it currently is showing the total of the Port Orchard project at $9.4 million. At our last meeting, that's been updated to an 18.5. Uh, how does that impact this model? Yeah, so a, a, a little bit about this table in, in this uh, report. I took four columns and squeezed them together so they're not shown on this page. But Russ, would you please go to page number 29, the very last page? I knew that this would come up. I, I didn't want the numbers to be so small that we couldn't read them. So what I did was take the, yeah, go to 29, please. Is that one or the uh, next, the next page. You'll see that it's harder to read. In the middle, there's something called future payments scheduled projected, and those are, there's Port Orchard, the ILA payments, the PERC I, ILA, uh, Port Gamble, ILA um, and the POBC and W ILA payments. I just, I, I just, those columns are, are not showing on the other page, and I, that's, it's just harder to read. So, um, but this total is the same. The, the total on the right hand side in the fund balance is the same. Um, the, those numbers are in there. I just, uh, again, for ease of, of viewing, uh, just took those columns and put them behind the screen. And I believe those are the right those are the right numbers. Please correct me if you think that, that something is missing there. Jim, uh, I'm trying to read it, looking up here, but I see fourteen million two hundred 
total payments for Port Orchard. Uh, can you scroll up just a touch? And you were just saying 18 and a half, John. Is that the correct number it should be? Yeah, we were originally in ILA at, at, at 12, right? And then we added six and a half. And then the perk on this one is 58,000, which is what we have required in our ILA, but we have had the assumption that we're going to have more ILAs as they continue on and that that price will go up. And I forget the number that they just asked for, but I think it's close to 10, is that right? It's uh, 7.89 million. And, and that's over to the right, five columns to the right. Yeah. So oh, I see. New so, requests. So, thank you. Now I can read it. Yes. Yeah, so, so what That's I my fault, so what I did here, sorry, what I did here was I took the what I called kind of the original or um, payments that were sort of obligated prior to the last two months. I left them in standalone columns rather than add them together into a single column because I wanted to keep track in my head the original versus the sort of what I called new requests. Now I see it. And and so. That's why, again, it gets harder to read. It's just, it's hard to read, and I uh, apologize for that, but it's a, it's just, I, I don't like not being able to read the schedules on the screen. Yeah, Port Orchard should only be 16 mil, so I think we've already given them $2 million. So I think that's why that's 16. Mr. Chairman, um, uh, Mr. Mr. Bauer, Bauer from, from Northwest Northwest Municipal, Municipal Advisors, Advisors raised, raised his, his hand. hand. Yes. Yeah, hi, Scott Bauer, Northwest Municipal Advisors. I did want to point out, Jim, that I think your Port Orchard figures here are not what we showed the board, but your, your own assumptions on the size of the bond, correct? I, uh, I did not resize any of the bond issues. I just took the, I took the column of numbers, Scott, from your schedules at the January 19th meeting and, and typed them in, put them in manually. Um, this is the GO bond scenario not I know you did a scenario with sales tax revenue bonds that had higher debt service Scott and I did I have that in my model but I don't have that on one of the printouts in this report I think if you recall Scott the the revenue bond scenario uh, you had a reserve fund in there and so you didn't have a payment in 2041 uh, but you had higher payments coming from 2026 down Yep, thank you. Other other questions? Is any other questions from the board? I, I, I do, uh, Walt Draper. I'm, I'm not sure this is the right time to discuss it, but you know, over the last year, we've had a number of discussions about a 5% fee on uh, various revenues from the circuit of the Northwest. It was always unclear to me whether that was just a 5% on, uh, on, admission, on admissions cost or it included parking and concessions, that kind of thing. What's happened about that? Because that was a source of revenue that would make things, in my opinion, much easier for the PFD if it were, uh, if we could count on it, where does that stand? Yeah, thanks. That's a that's a good question. The um, so when we could not get the twenty point five million dollars, when we found out that that was uh, just too big of a bite to take off, we had to take that we had to take that five percent facility charge, the voluntary facility charge, out of the uh, cash flows and use that to help fund other um, uh, sources of capital so that so, so if we if we can get the 20.5 million I think the facility charge concept can come back or perhaps a modified version of of that concept can come back into the equation uh, I you know we have to look at we have to look at the senior bond um, waterfall and the revenue stream and what is pledged to those bondholders and uh, perhaps we can do something on a uh, uh, below the line basis to to provide funds to um, KPFD 
uh, in, you know, maybe in the later years or once stabilization occurs. I'm just tossing up ideas here. I haven't spoken, and I, I haven't spoken uh, with them about options. Um, but, but I mean, I, I think there are, I think there are options available, and we could, you know, together figure this out in a, you know, public-private partnership arrangement where we're all working as a team together um, to make the project work. And that, that's really what my goal is in coming here and in, in talking about this is, you know, this, this is a partnership that's been ongoing. It's, um, it's been a great partnership. We'd like uh, additional contributions because we can, when we access the debt capital markets, it validates the project to have the public involved. Um, we, we changed from direct bonds with cash coming in at the, at the uh, to CNW for the uh, construction of the event centers to payments over time, which frankly are harder are harder to deal with. But but I I felt that coming back here with that kind of request made more sense in light of some of the uh, recent additional requests and, and and the cash flows I've been looking at with your advisors and and watching as I watch the the monthly board meetings. So I, I just felt like it made more sense to ask for and to construct a payment schedule that makes sense over time. And I, I'm not, you know, this payment schedule that I came up with probably wouldn't, won't be the last, it probably won't be what we end up with. It probably will go through several iterations. We'll look at, you know, a bunch of different scenarios and numbers and, and I, I think if we put our heads together, we can come up with something that adds up to the 10.25 million that makes sense for everybody. Um, if, if, if the KPFD is willing to entertain, you know, support that kind of a letter of intent, and then subsequently, once we have the financing, um, come with a, an ILA with numbers in it. We don't have to have the, we don't have to decide the numbers today. That's, this is all trying in, a, in the uh, good faith of trying to come up with something that works for everybody. Okay, do we have any other questions from the board? I, I have one question as a follow-up to that. Um, I think I've, I got a little lost when you were talking about a potential for some of the funding um, in the later years on this. Was that only if the PFD were participating in the $20 million, or is that a potential for this $10 million participation? Well, I, I don't have the answer to that. I, I'm tossing out ideas as as we as I get asked the questions. I. I you know, to get the five percent, um, we would have to have twenty point five million dollars because otherwise we're going to have revenue loss that we can't afford to pay a, say, preferred debt holder or some other some other investor. So that was the reason why it, it, it's out. But can we come up with a, a, a something else? Maybe it's a one percent charge that starts in twenty twenty eight, or it's a two percent that starts in twenty thirty. I, I, I'm. Uh, it, it's I don't I don't have the answer, Aaron, and it's it's not defined. I I don't I don't know, but it's certainly worth having um, a, an open discussion about. So th this is this is Walt again. So if, if do I understand correctly that uh, eliminating the use of the five percent admissions tax w um, was what enabled you to go from a twenty million request? to a 10 million request, is that correct? Yes. Okay. okay. Any other questions? If not, I, I have a couple for you. So who is gonna own this event center, the port or the circuit when it's done? I didn't hear the question, what was the question? Axel, who, who is going to own the event center? Who is the owner of the center? Well, the public is the owner of the event center. So I, the port is obviously the, um, I would say, the, the landlord. And the way the contracts are written, at the end of the day, um, it belongs to the public. It's a public facility owned by the public, so. which essentially would be the port. I wasn't able to hear that really good. Who is going to be the owner, the port? So, so Commissioner Shackle John, John said, said that the, the uh, public, public would, would own it, it right? right? So, so they're, in essence, essence public, public facilities, facilities district, district would own, own the event center. center. So, so 
the I, I thought it was the port that would own it. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I, the I, I think those, those are some, some of the questions, questions that we have, that we have to, to we have to get, get answers to, to with regard to, to who would who own it. it. I, think I think Circuit Northwest, Northwest would operate, operate it. it. But who would, who would own it? it? And of and course, course, that's, that's a, key a key question because whoever owns it then has, has the ability, ability to, to be able to add an emissions tax or uh, uh, generate, generate different, different revenue, revenue from that. And so, and so I think it's a, it's a, it's a key, key question, question to ask as to who owns, owns it. The other thing, too, is we have to consider the liability. We have to consider legally what can we do with regard to receiving a different type of revenue besides just our sales tax rebate, which, which is our only source of revenue, revenue right, right now. now. So, I, so definitely I definitely think that we've got to have answers, answers to, those to those questions. Right, I agree. You know, my, my next question is, when are they going to start building the Circuit of the Northwest? Is that going to be this summer? The, the plan is to close on all financing instruments on the 28th of June and start construction. Construction will be phased as to what gets started. Uh, obviously, there's a whole plan around the construction, but everything gets financed at once, and construction starts all at once. So condos will start to get constructed. They'll start clearing. I mean, it, it's all it's all one master plan. So if the PFD doesn't do this, are they still going to construct this, or will it stop everything? Well, if we don't, if we can't fund 100% of the project by June 28th, we'll have to delay the um, closing, we'll have to delay the financing, and uh, perhaps miss the construction cycle. It depends on, depends on what, where we can raise the extra $10 million. We'll have to go raise it somewhere else, and uh, I don't know how long that would take, but if, you know, if somebody handed us a check tomorrow, we would be in business, but um, so far that hasn't happened. So the way I understand, so without the public portion, the private portion is not going to happen this summer. It all has to happen at one time. Okay. With all the money at one time, we can't do it in piece. We're not doing it in pieces. Okay. Yeah. That's all the questions I have. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, uh, Wall here. Uh, I have a question. I, I guess for Scott. Scott, are, are are you happy with the figures we've seen tonight? Do you agree with those uh, that Jim has presented? Well, Walt, I guess I wouldn't want to provide an opinion yet. We haven't had a chance to look over this uh, spreadsheet yet. So oh, okay. to, to the extent we're allowed to, I'd like to review it with the executive director and then potentially the executive team, again, if allowed by the board here. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, that's it. Then we'll conclude this. What we'll do is we'll review it with our legal and financial personnel and hopefully we'll be able to get this on the agenda for our next meeting. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I can make a, a uh, if I can make a quick comment real sure. quick. I, I, know I know that the port, port is looking for an answer, answer right away, right away. Um, but we will do everything we can to have this on the agenda to take it to a vote in April at our April meeting. Um, reason being, of course, is that um, we, have we have to go, to go through it through thoroughly with our financial, financial advisors. advisors. Uh, uh, Mr. Towns, Towns, I suppose we will probably have another meeting or two with you as we talk about these, these things, things as well. Um, and, um, then and then also, also legal, legal or bond, or bond council, council, we're going to want all of them to be able to weigh in. in. We're, we're not, not looking to drag our feet. We're not looking to delay the decision. So I personally will make every effort to make sure that we can get it in front of the board so the board can make a decision in April. Yes, that sounds good. And, and Mr. Chair, I, I just want to make completely sure that the executive director and I are on the same page uh, because the, the letter dated here uh, doesn't ask for any action to be taken by the KPFD at this time other than uh, what's been presented to us this evening. So I would be uh, want to make sure that there, there's an official ask, whether they're looking for a letter of intent, an interlocal agreement, whatever that looks like. Um, so that, that we know what, we're, what we need to vote on. Exactly right, Director Morrissey. As a matter of fact, what I would like to see is after we've gone through all of this would be a formal letter of intent that would be signatures required, and that's what would be presented to our board in, August, in April, just like what we did for the city of Port Orchard. And, and I think as a, as a model, you, you could look at the uh, Port of Bremerton's LOI and the conditions on that and the, what that looked like uh, as a sample 
if you wanted to look at that. But it, it's a conditional LOI conditioned upon the other parts of the funding coming together. Everybody comes to a closing. We agree on the terms, and everything closes on one on one day. But it's a conditional LOI, um, and it's subject to whatever your requirements are. The port had the feasibility review and uh, and um, funding 100% of the project. And so uh, you'll, you can look at that and use that as a sample or put, we can put one together. I'll, I'll certainly help put it together, whatever, whatever anybody needs uh, in that regard. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so, so much, much Mr. Towns, for coming all the way out here. Yes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Strackeljohn. So we'll move on to item 5A, Northwest Municipal Advisors contract extension. We just need a motion. Correct, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Um, we, um, at our last we, meeting, our if you'll remember, remember, we had the we Northwest, had the Northwest uh, Municipal, Municipal Advisors contract extension that we presented to the board. The board, the board asked, asked us if, uh, if um, our, legal our legal counsel had had an opportunity to see it yet, and he had not. Uh, that, that was, was that, that was my mistake. mistake. Uh, we, have we have then, been, he, has he has looked, looked at it, at it. Uh, we've, we've made some changes, changes to it, we've presented, presented that back to Municipal, Municipal Northwest Advisors, Advisors. They, are they are satisfied with it. With it. So, so the contract, contract extension, extension, it's actually here in the presentation, but the contract extension, extension now meets the requirements of our legal counsel and Northwest Municipal Advisors. So all I'm looking for is a motion from the board to accept the contract extension as written. Do we have a motion? Mr. I'll Chairman. I'll move to approve the contract extension as written. Okay, a second? I'll second it. Uh, discussion? No discussion. All in favor of approving the Northwest Municipal Advisors contract extension, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Nope. The contract extension is approved. Aye. We're going to move on to item B, which is the uh, Kitsap County ILA amendment number three. Correct. This is just a point of a discussion. The, uh, I am working right now with uh, the county um, on ILA amendment number three. This would be to include their additional request for $350,000 um, that they had requested from us this past year. Um, it is, uh, uh, I have done the changes so far. It is back over to the county for them to take a look at it, make their changes. It'll go back to our legal counsel for one last review. Uh, the district attorney's office normally likes to look at those as well. They'll get his review. So the intention is to have ILA amendment number three for the Port Gamble project in front of the board for, uh, for a motion for approval at our April meeting. Oh, okay. Russ, Thank you. Can you raise the agenda slide a little bit? Yes. Oh, Harry, that's good. Thank you. You're welcome. I apologize. I don't know how you heard that. Okay. Next item is item C, which is the website update. Uh, correct. Um, the we got our. Um, we got our logo finally uh, approved by the board. Uh, we've now implemented it. If you go to our website, you'll now see that it has our new logo up at the top and it has our, our um, mission statement down at the bottom or our, our uh, um, what, what do we call our tagline at the bottom, building communities and enriching lives. Um, I'm still working on changes to the website because the website, um, there's quite a bit of dated material, so I need to go in and make changes to that, so I'm working on those things. Uh, but yeah, just invite you to go out and take a look when you get an opportunity to take a look at our new website. And then that goes hand in hand with the uh, last point of the general business, which is the board member photos for the website. I'd like to propose to the board that I set up an opportunity for board members to be able to go on their own to a, to a photographer and have their headshots taken. Because what I would like to do is I'd like to post those on our website. I think, I think it's, it's good, good for the public, public to be able to not only uh, see, uh, see the names, but see the faces, faces associated with the names. With the names. I, would I would also propose, propose to ask the board members to add a one or two, or two sentence bio, bio so they could click on that and get a little bit more information about the, 
about, about the board, board members, members as well. well. So, uh, uh, I, don't I don't think it needs a formal motion. motion. I just, I just would like to get a sense, sense of the board, if the board would be open to doing uh, board member photos. And if so, then I will set up a photographer where everybody can go to it at their own at their own pace. I've already talked with our website developers. Yes, Walt. Can your photographer take 20 years off our age? You know, Walt, I'll, I, I will do my best. I promise. Thank you. I, I'm going to ask him to thin me out about 20 pounds, too. Um, Russ, this is Aaron. Um, do they need to be studio photographs, or would we rather have the more... Uh, I don't know. Casual is not the right word, but well, well quite honest, honest, quite, quite honestly, honestly uh, uh, Director Alita, I would, I would like, like to have, have all the all same, same background. background. So, so when, when everybody looks at it, it looks like all the headshots, headshots are taken at the same, same location, location, same pose, same and so forth. Now, now again, again, it's kind of up to the board. It's your picture. So whatever it is that you want to put up there, if you have a professional headshot and you'd rather have that up there, that's fine. And if you want to just send that to me, that's absolutely fine. You know, uh, Russ, I think I, I like the idea. You know, uh, when we brought you on, we, we talked about marketing uh, on behalf of the KPFD, and I think uh, that's just another step. So, great idea. I think uh, I'm in support. Thank you. As am I. Russ, I think it's I good and we should do it. Superior judgment. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you, Thank Director, Director Draper. Draper. Any other Any discuss discussions, discussions about the websites? websites um, um, anything, anything else? else? All right. Okay, then I believe we have to go back to item 1E and bring that up. Yeah. Uh, you know, all, all that truly is, is is a formality, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I move that we accept the Kitsap uh, Conference Center financial report uh, as presented. And I second. Okay, all in favor of accepting the uh, KCC financial report, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item 1E is approved. And any other comments? One last thing I'd like to do, and I, I would like to, I, we put the financial report into the uh, consent agenda. But, but I think, I think for public, public knowledge, knowledge, it's important for us to be able to show what that looks like as well. As so, so if you'll you, if you you recall, recall um, we've, we've been working, working on this uh, expenditures, expenditures available funds, funds and expenditures, expenditures report, report um, for the for last few months, months now. now. And based, and based upon, upon feedback that I got uh, uh, from the from board the board at our last meeting, we've gone ahead and done some refining of it. I want to show, this is a, this is kind of a, if you will, a, a one, one glimpse, glimpse of, of where, where we're, we're currently, currently at month, month to month. month. So, so if you'll, if you'll indulge me for just a second, second um, as, as of, of the 1st of, first of March, March in our 977 capital fund, we have, have 2,396,000. In our 977 cash fund, as of the 9th of March, which is the last time I pulled the report, we have 225,894.47. As, As of the 1st of, first of March, March, we had $33,069 in our operations funds. Therefore, I did not need to move any money from our 977 cash account over to operating funds because I had enough to cover the operating funds for this month. We spent $19,412 on operating expenses for the month of March, so we had left over $13,365. If you total it all up, by the end of March, we have $2.635 million. So I think that this, I, I'm hoping that this satisfies what the board was hoping to see with regard to Russ, where are we at? What do we got in capital funds? What do we have in cash? What's available to us? And then, and then what's, what's it all add, add up, up to? to. So, so I would I like, like uh, I would like comment from the board on this. Is this is this hit the mark? Is this more closely hit the mark for you? Uh, I I don't speak for everyone, Russ, but uh, it, it works great for me. And I agree. I like it a lot too. It's good. Okay. The next, the next slide, slide is something, is something that, that this is, is um, 
this, this takes our budget, budget into account, account right? Because right? I think, I think it's, it's really important, important that we see where we're at currently with our budget. budget. And, and then it also includes the same information that we talked about. As a matter of fact, if you get down here to, if you get down here for each one of the different ones, we actually break it up a little bit more in the 968 operating expenses. You can see the 19,412, that matches exactly what we just reported out on the other report. But I think, I think most, most importantly, importantly, when it comes, comes to the budget, the budget you can, can see, see right, right now, now that we're coming, coming up to the end of the first quarter, quarter and in our budget, budget we spent 16.9% of our budget. Of our budget. Well, well, in a, in a typical, typical quarter, quarter, it would normally be 25%. Percent. So you so can, can see that we are uh, uh, just 8.1% percent percent under budget, budget right now. now. Um, um, so, so, you know, it's we're able to stay... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, 19.53 19 19 down here at the operating, operating expenses. So, so we're, we're able, able to state, state that we're actually on track to spend less, less than what we had originally projected, projected in the budget. In the budget. So, so this is just another, another clip, clip, quick, quick glimpse, glimpse for you. For you. So, and then, uh, you, you're muted, you're Director muted, Japer. Walt, well, well, you're, you're muted. muted. Is it because we spent less or we had more income? Is it, Is it I, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, we could we barely hear you, Walt. Say that again. Oh, oh no, no, we, we spent, spent less. less. Okay, thank yeah, you. We, you bet. And then the, the last, last one's the one that you always see each month for the projected, projected funds. funds. Uh, we, we have not, not received, received any, any um, um, invoices, invoices for reimbursements for the last two months, months so, so none of that has really changed. What you can see here is total remaining balance that we have on obligations, ILAs. We have a remaining balance of $12,107.20. Of course, that does not include any new ILAs that we've made or anything that's projected. This is just where we're, where we're at with our current state. Okay, that's all I had for financials. Any, any questions from the board? Thank you, Russ. Actually, you're very you're very helpful in your explanations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, if there's nothing else, then the meeting is adjourned. All right. Thank, all right, you, thank all you all for attending. attending. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Chairman.